Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. Today we're going to get the siphon going for the pond. If you've been watching the last couple of videos, you know that we've been dealing with an unusually dry summer and we've been trying different solutions to get water to our pond to fight off evaporation. I know that summer is coming to a close and we shouldn't have too much more to worry about this year, but it's always good to be prepared for next year in case we get another dry summer. So things we've tried already is a hydraulic ram pump, which did work. But uh, in the last video, we shot some elevations to see if a siphon would work because a siphon has a lot more potential to move more water quickly and fill our pond more rapidly. So I went out and bought some supplies. I'll show you how we're gonna put the siphon together and we'll see if it works. Stick around. All right, so here's a quick layout of the fittings that we got for this siphon and I kind of have them laid out in order of elevation. So you can see this is gonna be our intake. We're gonna go uphill to a T, this is what we'll use to charge the system, and then the siphon will suck water back down below our intake to our pond. So we have a foot valve here, so that way we can charge the system. We can put water in the T here, it'll fill this pipe, it'll fill this pipe, and this foot valve is going to remain closed, and it only allows water to flow one way. So when there's water going this way, there's back pressure. When the siphon starts, it'll allow water to suck this way. So then it'll come up here, uh, we have another connection, and then we've got a cap. So once we're ready to start the siphon, we're gonna wanna cap this so it's not sucking air. And then we have our hose coming from the T where we're charging the system down to this uh, ball valve. And this ball valve is what we're gonna use to shut off the outfeed. That way we can fully uh, charge the system with water. And then when we have all of this hooked up, how the system is gonna work to get the siphon going is we'll have this ball valve shut, this foot valve is gonna be closed, we'll have the cap off of here, we will fill this T with water to get both of these lines, both ends of the siphon uh, completely charged with water. Then we'll go ahead and cap this back off so that it's airtight. We'll come down here, open this ball valve, and it should, gravity should start sucking the water that's in this pipe down, which will create a vacuum and start sucking water through uh, this foot valve. And that is the basics of a siphon. So uh, we've got about three or 400 feet of hose that we've got to lay out. We'll get this all put together and see if it works. Now we need to go ahead and charge the system. I left this water here that was from the ram pump. We're gonna use that to pump in here. And rather than trying to, you know, water bottle 300 or 400 foot of hose at a time uh, into this pipe, I've got my to-go power portable power station and I've got a sub pump in here. Now I know the problem is we've got 
a closed system at that end. So we're gonna have water trying to go down and air trying to come back up at the same time. So we're gonna send Doug down to that end, open the ball valve. I'm gonna hold this here, pump water down through. And as soon as water starts coming out, coming out down at Doug's end, uh, he's gonna shut that valve off and this line should be full. I got a mosquito in my eye. It's getting close to dusk here and the bugs are getting terrible. But anyway, that's the plan. We'll at least get this line full. And then if I have to fill this line here, you know, one milk jug gallon at a time, that's what I'll have to do to charge a system when you're running a, a three or 400 foot siphon. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Better grab that hose. Yeah, it's actually, it's not pumping out as bad as I thought it was going to. But I know it's going to because there's it's building air pressure inside that line. So all right, I'm gonna run down, open the valve then. Yep. All right, so we got the downhill line uh, loaded with water, and I had Doug do the same thing on the other end. He went and held that valve open, and we got this line charged too. There might still be some air in the line, but I'm hoping once we put this cap on and go open the valve down there, it'll suck any air out of the line that we have. So we're gonna put this cap on. Now, do you have water all the way to the top of that then? Just about, yeah. Okay. As soon as I put the pump on, uh, I'm immediately getting back pressure geysering back out. So I think the line is pretty close to full. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten this up and then we'll go down to the other end, open the valve and see if the siphon will start. Okay, and we threaded this line too because we need this to be airtight so it doesn't break the siphon. And that should be good there. So let's go pop the other end open and see if we got water flowing. All right, this is going to be the moment of truth here. I know we're going to get some water coming out because the line has water in it. I'm just hoping that it has enough to continuously pull water from the creek and we're not just draining all the uh, water we just primed. So we'll let that run for a minute and see if... Uh, it's able to pull water from the creek. Seems like it's losing pressure. We might not have a good charge. Might be that spring valve too, I don't know. It may go and stay a straight, small trickle like that. I hear it gurgling. And then if we go pull that spring valve off the end, it might come out substantially faster. Yeah. All right, so Doug's gonna give us a whistle when he gets the other, uh, that foot valve off. We're thinking that that spring foot valve is reducing our flow. Really, we only need that to get the siphon started to hold that back pressure. Once we get that off, hopefully, We'll have a full one inch pipe coming out of here. All right, I just heard the whistle. It is definitely picking up in pace, so we're getting a stronger siphon now. So the other thing I wanna find out is our ramp pump was putting about 1.33 gallons per minute. I know this is significantly more, but I want to find out how much more. So with the ram pump, 1.33 gallons, it took 45 seconds to fill a one gallon milk jug. We've got a timer here. I'm going to go ahead and there we go. full. So 16 seconds to fill one gallon. That works out to what, about four gallons a minute? So at least three times as much flow we're getting out of this siphon versus the ram pump. Now the ram pump still has its place. Not everybody is in a situation where they can siphon it, where their discharge is lower than where their infeed is. Uh, so if you're in a situation where you actually need to pump water uphill, you have no choice but to use a ram pump or some kind of electric pump. Uh, but for our situation, like I said, this just puts out three times more water than that ram pump did. So this is gonna be a, a good setup for us. I'm gonna do a quick calculation to see how many gallons per day 
week and year we get with this setup here. All right, so in regular hometown acres fashion, we're gonna do some more quick math here. So if I take four gallons per minute times 60 minutes, we're getting 240 gallons an hour times 24 hours in a day. That's 5,760 gallons in a day times seven. That's 40,000 gallons a week. And if I multiply that by 52 weeks in a year, that's almost 2.1 million gallons of water that we're getting through the siphon for the pond. That should fill this pond a lot faster than that ram pump. So do you remember how many gallons you were getting out of that pipe at its so mid-level? Our, our spring head down there, uh, when we're going through the spring thaw and all of our snow melt and snow pack is melting off, I remember I measured that back in March or April. We were getting about 10 gallons per minute out of that. But when we've had as dry as the summer as we have, the ground is just rock hard. A lot of our springs are dry springs. And uh, right now we've got just a trickle coming out of there. So it's really nice to be able to supplement with the stream and the siphon. Let's go over and measure that one real quick. Might as well. All right, so I don't know if you guys can see this, but that's the flow we're getting out of our spring head right now. Like I said, it's been extremely dry. So we're gonna go ahead and measure this. It's gonna be uh, definitely, it'll be a couple minutes for us to fill up this gallon jug. So go ahead and hit start. It's crazy to me that this was putting out 10 gallons a minute in the spring and it's reduced down to just this. You're not quite a half yet. All right, so I think we're gonna call it there. We're at five minutes and we've gotten a half gallon. So one gallon every 10 minutes. I can see why we're losing so much to evaporation. We had no water running into this pond. So yeah, that siphon is definitely gonna help us out. All right, so we just got done filming the uh, spring head over there and that was pretty disappointing. And we walked back over here and uh, we seemed to think that this looked like it was running stronger than it was before. We couldn't tell if it was just because we were used to seeing that trickle. We're gonna go ahead and test it one more time just to see if it's picked up any pace. Cool. Uh, about less than 12 seconds. So we picked up an extra four seconds. I'll let you guys go ahead and do the math. We're not gonna run through the uh, days, weeks, and years again, but it's running even better. I'm hoping it continues to pick up speed as it works air out of the lines there. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, give me a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.